The ITV has continuously improved its broadcasting technology and information system. From the early days of video, the station took the lead in digitizing its entire broadcast platform. Despite the difficulty associated with this conversion, the overall result has been sustainable and successful. What I'm looking at is the storage space for videotapes from the early days of Dang Ai TV. They actually continue to exist and are stored in this place. These full-length videotapes, which are about the size of a book, contain the wonderful history of Dang Ai TV. This precious collection spans 20 years. In the past, all of Dang Ai TV's programs were made on videotapes. All of our work was relied upon these tapes. However, Dai TV would face a very big challenge in its third year of operation, which would threaten this precious collection. In 2001, Typhoon Nari brought heavy rain and hovered over Taiwan for 50 hours leading to record rainfall and flooding. Northern Taiwan was hit the hardest as the Jilong River broke through Taipei City's embankments. The MRT's Banan Line flooded, along with the Taipei Main Station, along with parking lots in the Xinyi District, creating traffic in the area. The ITV located in Nangang wasn't spared from the flood waters. At 6 and 7 o'clock that day, we returned to Dai TV and then began pumping the water. But it had still flooded the B1 level, and we waited until half of this water was removed, and some were able to go in to make sure that no one could be poisoned. When we eventually went in, it was still quite hard to see, and you could feel around and see our videotapes. I called for some plastic pins to put our videotapes inside, where we could wash the tapes with water and rescue them. At the time, the library for these tapes was the fourth floor in the basement, which along with the studio and parking lot were all covered in muddy water. Also, the power supply system was completely flooded, meaning that broadcast news programs couldn't continue. As many colleagues canceled their vacation to come back to the office to help with the rescue efforts to find and set up a temporary studio. Remarkably, after just eight hours, the broadcast resumed. I felt so touched at the time we were using brushes to clean off the mud. And later, coach buses were coming with volunteers, and they taught us to use the brush this way, in a sort of meditative manner. Some masters even came up from Huarian, and they sat quietly over there doing this work from the beginning. Zhiji volunteers also set up a center in the Guandu grounds to rescue more than 20,000 videotapes. Everyone was delighted and even cried when the first videotape was played and the master's voice and image was seen. I really thought we had done a great job, and we proved that we could do it, which led more people to be mobilized. As more and more tour buses came, as this was really a mission impossible, and what we did really touched people. Now all these rescued tapes are carefully stored on the shelves in this library. This library is kept at a constant temperature and humidity, as we hope that we can permanently preserve these tapes. Kept at a constant temperature and humidity, this film library preserves all the compassionate works that Ziji does all over the world. It's good to make a record and have everything well organized and tell the story well, so that everyone can see the virtue and kindness. For convenience sake, all of these videotapes have been digitized. Overcoming this difficult period of time has led Dai TV into the digital realm, becoming the first to implement an all-digital broadcast system in 2005, which won a Golden Bell Award.
当时我们在短短九。At that time, it took us just nine months, as we had to start from scratch and complete everything with this digital broadcasting system for Dai TV. After converting to digital broadcast, the production of programs and broadcast became much faster, was more accurate, as the pace of progress never stopped. In 2012, a high-definition channel was launched, and rapid developments in technology continued to progress. This is Dai TV's content on the internet. In 2013, the Dai TV app was officially launched, allowing one to watch two different Dai TV stations, integrating this media and new broadcast technology to reach out to a more diverse group of viewers. Now, this whole broadcast environment emphasizes blogging and social media. Our monthly publication and magazines, radio and television station, all have to make use of this digital convergence to convey our content. Everyone is now empowered to be part of media, expanding Dai TV's reach from traditional media to interactive audiovisual sharing, entering into new communities. When we were doing this digitization process, our engineering staff made a wish that we could transmit a good signal every second until we die. That was our wish. In the past, every minute and every second of each broadcast has been carefully managed and looked after. In this new era, which is more inclusive and allows more input from the public, even more work and commitment will be needed to maintain the high standards of this network. <laughs>